ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Joe, for the introduction. Um, I'm, unfortunately, I, I have to leave precisely at uh, around 4.15, 4.20, so I, maybe I can take a few questions at the end. It's, it's nice to see f a few people left. I had my fears at some time that there wouldn't be anyone, but it's always good to see a few of you. And a select band. So I hope to uh, keep you uh, entertained and uh, suitably refreshed. The subject uh, is uh, something completely different from uh, what went uh, on uh, before. Um, it's, of course, energy security, and I've added a subtitle, um, Chasing Shadows, because I think that uh, this aptly uh, characterizes this subject. We are indeed, as you will see, I think, and I hope you will understand by the end, that uh, it, we are really uh, chasing a will-o'-the-wisp. It's a very difficult subject, uh, and a very important one, of course. I um, have to, excuse me, find out how to move this. I presume, yes. <clears throat> so, um, I'm an oil man by, by trade, many years of experience, um, but I also have uh, dabbled in gas and, I, and uh, nuclear power and other things. But uh, for me, oil remains the most important source of energy, as you will see in the slide I'll present. Um, certainly in the global economy, it's a key source of energy and arguably the world's most valuable industry. Um, however, we have serious concerns about uh, the security of supply of this vital fuel. And uh, now we have a new element called the security of demand for oil. This comes from the producers who are now saying that they would like to uh, see uh, secure demand in the future before they invest. So that's a new aspect to this problem. Um, historically, of course, um, oil supplies have been uh, really um, affected um, severely by uh, trade embargoes, wars, political upheavals, as you see up there, guerrilla activity, strikes, and recently, in the last five or so years, um, there have been losses of supplies from hurricanes. Um, as you all know, prices are, uh, have been volatile, exceedingly so, and uh, in my opinion and many others in the business, they are likely to continue to be so because uh, the nationalizations of the 1970s, and I, I'll return to this theme uh, slightly later, um, have, uh, since then oil has become highly politicized um, and, and, um, and since more of our supplies in the future will come from the Middle East uh, as the non-OPEC supplies uh, reach a plateau and then start declining, we, we will have um, uh, even more volatility because of the b inherent instability of the uh, Middle East. Just a quick uh, look at how important, as I said, uh, it's the most valuable single industry in the world. Um, this is uh, the value chain of oil for 2008. Some of the figures are uh, estimates, but I think uh, the, 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 the overall figure is, is roughly right at around $4 trillion uh, in total value, uh, about 7% of global GDP. So 7% of global GDP, that's a huge number uh, for one single industry from the production of oil all the way through the transportation, refining, distribution, and marketing. The shares, uh, um, uh, as given here in red, most of um, uh, the value of oil is in the production of oil. Uh, when I say production, not the actual cost of production, but the sale of oil uh, at the first stage uh, when it comes uh, from the wells um, and, and is priced at the export terminals. So 74% of the total value is in the upstream side, as we say, then 3% for transportation, 4% for refining, 6% for distribution and marketing, and uh, last but not least, 13% uh, of the total value is in taxes, $500 billion, my estimate, which goes to the governments of the world uh, for the use of oil. So a very important industry, uh, very valuable. The volatility, as I mentioned, a key component today, a uh, very big uh, subject. The volatility has been increasing in the last uh, few years, since 2003 onwards. Uh, you could see these bands, uh, standard deviations around the mean. Between 2003 and 2007, before the huge spike in 2008, um, the mean was around $49.50, and the standard deviations were very, had increased. The band of 
volatility, if you like, around this mean was much, much greater than that long period before then, 1985 to 2002. Uh, you can see 2008 was a, the cataclysmic year in the, in the oil business and for the world as a, as a whole, because not only did we have, um, of course, the recession in the second half beginning to bite, but in the first half we had that huge run-up in the price of oil to reach a peak of $147.27 for WTI in, in, on the 7th, I think, of July. But since then we've had a, almost as equally cataclysmic a collapse in the price of oil, and just recently in the last uh, three or four weeks we've had a, a little uptick, and, and certainly from January there's been a trend upwards, but uh, really coming back to the $49 mean of the whole period 2003 and 2007. By the way, if I may just stay here for one minute, um, recent work that I've done uh, at the center where I, where I work, um, has, uh, has, I've been concerned with the effect of high oil prices on economic growth, because usually um, we don't look at this subject uh, because we've forgotten that in the 1970s, um, high oil prices and the, the spikes of the 70s caused the recessions then, but of course this time around we, we took our eye off the ball, but I think that was wrong because the, the effects have been cumulative because the, high, the prices started rising in 1999, 2000, 2001 not so much, then 2002, 3, 4, 5, and then acceleration over quite a number of years. My, I calculate that that total effect um, the cumulative effect on global GDP was 1% by 2008. So global GDP would have been higher, forgetting the recession, whatever else happened, global GDP would have been higher by 1% um, than, it, than it eventually ended up being. Of course, it was declining towards the end of 2008, and in 2009 we're in, in, a, in a quite a deep recession. So um, the price of oil rising over a long period, taking the price from $30 to over 100 on average, year by year, um, had, had, has had a big effect on the, on the world's economy. Of course, it's been delayed. 1% is around $570 billion. Now, if you spread it across uh, six point so many billion people, it, 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 doesn't, it isn't that much, but it's still, for very poor countries, it means a, 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 means a lot. So let's not forget the, the, the really deep, lasting effect that this has had uh, on the world economy. So, to the subject uh, we have today, why should we worry about security of energy supplies? Well, going back to Adam Smith, in a free economic system, these issues really, in a theoretical sense, are of no concern in a free system because the price mechanism, Adam Smith's uh, invisible hand, ensures that supplies always meet demand. Uh, now, of course, the real life is a little bit more complicated than that, but nevertheless, the sentiment is there. Furthermore, Depending on imported energy does not have to be uh, undesirable. After all, we know from international trade theory that the, 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 the doctrine of comparative advantage leads to spe specialization in production and exporting, and countries' mutual dependence grows over time, and that's a good thing. So as I say up here, I give you an example. The Middle East has the cheapest oil in the world. The United States has the greatest need for it. Uh, why should the Middle East not be the U.S.'s largest supply of oil, largest supplier? So that's the logic of international trade and comparative advantage. But of course, there are problems. The Middle East is, con or Middle Eastern oil is considered expensive uh, as oil sold into the market, not as a cost, but as oil sold, because uh, these con those countries there have uh, um, requirements, and oil is their biggest uh, form of taxation, if you like, their bi biggest source of revenue. So. Um, the, the, the pricing of oil becomes uh, allied to their fiscal needs. And of course the other problem with oil from that region is uh, that, the, that the region is unstable, unreliable if you like, um, which, which of course uh, renders it a, a problem from a strategic point of view. 